What is up, everybody? And Tracy, SG Live. It's our first show of the year, 2020. And we are here at the new Advenir Hotel. It's a Marriott Signature Hotel. And we're going to be interviewing Jason, the managing partner of Wood Ash Rye, the newest restaurant, one of the best restaurants in St. George. Vanderhall, if you've not seen one of these, Kent from Vanderhall was nice enough to let us use this today. It is a beauty of a ride. It's the only vehicle manufactured in the state of Utah. Uh, Two-seater, top down, drive all over town with these. And I think you can rent these also if you're, uh, you're looking for a hot date, boys. This is it right here. So we're gonna go inside, we're gonna talk to Jason. We're gonna have a great show, lots going on. Come on in, everybody. Tracy here, SG Live, and this is The Dish, everybody. We are here with Jason Neely from Wood Ash Rye. How are you, Ben? I'm good, how are you? You're looking good, brother. Thanks. So we're excited to have you here in St. George. Thank you. And uh, you've got another place out in Kanab, right? Mm hmm Sago Restaurant, yep. And what made you come to St. George? Um, I think the community was number one, probably. We knew that there was probably a space for us to fit in. Sure. There was some, uh, I guess, some people that wanted us to have a restaurant out here. We've had some success with Sago, and I think some of that stuff we just wanted to carry over to this market over. I have to tell you, when we heard that you guys were coming, we were a little excited. Because right. this is kind of new for St. George, you know? It is uh, farm fresh, right? Yeah, it is. It, and that's a big thing these days. Yeah. So to have something unique like that in St. George, I think it's gonna do really well. And we're gonna look at some of the menu items. We're gonna try some of them, right? Uh, you guys do uh, rolls, I hear, some really delicious. Some biscuits, yeah, we biscuits. do. Biscuits. Yes, buttermilk biscuits. Buttermilk biscuits. Can you say, I need a nap? <laughs> so we're gonna try some of that stuff. Uh, what, are, what are you known for? Well, I think, yeah, number one, uh, people are noticing the biscuits. Uh, they've come in intentionally for that. And I think uh, the other things that we're really known for, uh, hopefully, is our hospitality. Yeah, and really sure. the biggest thing for us is just to have people that care and that they give uh, other people from out of town a taste of what St. George really is. And that's just a community-driven restaurant, people that care, sure. and they want to take care of them, they'll give them the shirt off their back if they have Absolutely. to. Absolutely. How long have you been open? Um, so our grand opening was about a week ago, but we did some soft opening for about a month. So we wanted to have the community come in, see what they uh, what their feedback was, and then what we'll kind of opened the doors to everybody else. And you open seven days? Seven days a week, three meal periods, yep. And you have a full bar? For sure, yep. One of St. George's first full bars, meaning you can come in, you don't have to order food to get a drink. So what we have today, so we have two orders of the same thing. This is our uh, French scramble. So really decadent and uh, well spun uh, scrambled eggs. A little bit of black truffle on top. Whoa. That comes with the family breakfast. Also, this is a copa bacon. So it's from the shoulder, like almost like the collar area of the pig. Wow. A little bit different, but very unique and, and amazing. We do some local sausage as well. And this is our buttermilk biscuit. Look at that uh, monster. Comes with house-made jam and then some European butter as well. So. I'm a little excited. We're gonna try this. We got everybody in the kitchen looking at us. <laughs> I'm gonna cut this biscuit for you if you don't okay. mind too. Uh, and tell me about the butter again on the pancakes. So it's an ancho butter, so ancho chili. Uh, and then we just make a little bit of a compound butter out of it. <sighs> I love you. I don't even know you. <laughs> you did a good job. Yeah, so this is the uh, croque madame. So it's an open-faced ham sandwich. So you start with our boule bread country loaf that we make in-house. A little bit of Gruyere, which is one of the French mother sauces. And then we have that copa ham or bacon on top. And then a little bit of egg to go on top of that. Oh. Good? I love you. So this one, I like to say, is too pretty to eat sometimes, but Man, it's I'll worth it. it. So buttermilk syrup. We also do a brioche that we make in house, and then there's some creme fraiche on top of that, some fresh blueberries and uh, strawberries as well. A little bit of, uh, you're gonna get a little bit of custard in there as well wow. in the middle, so. Dessert for breakfast. My kind of place. And this is just breakfast, everybody. Yeah. So, Jason, thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Wood Ash Ride, come check it out, everybody. Thank you. We're talking Red Rock around town, events that are going on here in Washington County. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on. We're gonna try and keep you abreast of everything that's going on in the county, uh, Southern Utah, surrounding areas. 
So uh, hopefully if you have any ideas on things that you'd like to hear about, by all means, let us know. Give me a call, 227-5110, sgliveshow at gmail.com, and uh, we'll make sure we get it on the air. And I need my glasses. Creative Age Southern Arts Utah Arts and Healing Symposium. That's at Dixie State University in the Eccles Building. That's from 8 to 5, Saturday, February 29th. A full day of inspirational keynote speakers and 14 workshops for anyone who loves to learn and values art in their lives. And that's put on by uh, the Arts Council of Washington County. On Thursday, February 27th, from 6 to 8 p.m., Creative Art Spa is putting on soft pastels. It says each Creative Art Spa event focuses on a specific topic, and this one is once upon a time, the art night and a spa night met, fell in love, and had a love child. There you go. That is uh, $80. It includes guided meditation, soft pastel art making, and a chair massage. And that's at Art Provides. That's at 35 Main Street in St. George. Uh, back to February 29th, Danzen, a journey to Latin America, Southwest Symphony Concert. That's put on by the Southwest Symphony Orchestra, Friday, February 28th, 7.30 to 9.30. Dan's in a journey to Latin America concert featuring professional solo trumpet player Pacho Flores. That's my stage name. Anyway. And then, of course, February 28th at 8 p.m. at the one and only, everybody, Royal Bliss. If you've never seen this band, check them out. Uh, tickets are available at uh, the one and only. A great band. And then, I would be remiss if I didn't mention, on Friday, March 6th, the very first Street Fest here in St. George for the year. Brought to you by TDS, Stapley Pharmacy, Silver Reef Brewing Company, St. George Chamber of Commerce, Arts Incorporated, and the City of St. George Rap Fund. Uh, that is Tabernacle Street from 6 to midnight. There's a beer garden, lots of good stuff. Make sure you get down there. One of my personal favorites, but we all know why. That's St. George Street Fest. That's everything coming up. If you have any ideas on things you'd like to see here uh, mentioned on the show, get a hold of us and we'll put it on. We are talking news, local news. We like to call it The Take. It's kind of my take on things. Um, we'll talk a little bit about just about everything, most local, but uh, if, again, if there's anything that you'd like to hear about, by all means, reach out to us and we'll talk about it here on the show. So we're talking about the growth here in Washington County. Uh, of course, we are one of the fastest growing areas in the nation and Washington City itself is no stranger to that. Uh, Mayor Ken Nielsen, who's just a heck of a good guy, doing a great job planning growth in Washington City, uh, recently talked to um, some reporters about some of the things going on in town that we don't necessarily know about. You always think St. George and, and everything going on in St. George proper, but Washington is growing. There's a lot of stuff going on down there. Um, there are some residential subdivisions that are sprouting up across the city. There are several new apartment complexes that are being built, including a dedicated affordable housing complex that utilizes low income housing tax credits. So, you know, sure there's growth, but a lot of people need affordable housing and Washington City is stepping up to the plate and making that happen. Red Rock Apartments at Siena Hills, an affordable housing development in Washington City. And that's going up. There's also a couple assisted living facilities coming to Washington City. One is the Ovation Assisted Living Campus, which is in the Siena Hills development right there off of exit 13. And the other one is Primrose uh, being developed in Washington Fields. A lot of growth out there. I personally live in Washington Fields. You drive out that way towards Stuckey Farms, stuff going on all the time, lots of growth. Um, there's also plans for an auto mall. So if you've ever seen those auto malls, what's your thoughts on that? Think that's too much growth? Let me know. That is going up. There's a couple of medical complexes. They're doing some changes and additions to the golf course in Washington. They're gonna add um, additional driving range capacity for those that like to hit golf balls. If you've ever seen me golf, don't come out there while I'm golfing. It's not a pretty sight. Uh, Recreation-wise, the city has opened up two parks in the last year, one of them the Shooting Star Park in October and then the Canyons Park in November. There's also a lot of uh, renovations that's being done to some of the parks. Veterans Park over on Telegraph Street, if you notice, there's been lots of um, development going on there. And that's what's going on in Washington City. Now, I don't know if you've been watching the news, but uh, the city of St. George just approved a medical marijuana facility here in the city of St. George. What's your thought on that? Just curious. Um, 
you know, the laws are changing all over the place. There's a lot of people that uh, have their opinions. Uh, I think everywhere you go, even, even the local pharmacies are now selling CBD oil, but we're talking marijuana now. Canadian-based Terrasen Corporation announced it had been granted a medical cannabis processor license by the Utah Department of Agriculture and Food. Terrasen will be coming to St. George in the form of its subsidiary Terrasen Utah. The parent company has also been billed as the first to be licensed for sales across the United States, Canada, and Europe. Uh, Mayor Pike said, we expected we would have these types of businesses open here, and now we're seeing that start to happen, uh, the mayor said. So, um, what's your thoughts on that? Are you, a, are you a pot smoker? You smoke marijuana? You see a need for that? You see it being a positive or a negative? Send me an email, sgliveshow at gmail.com. Tell me your thoughts on that. And then, um, of course, as you know, uh, a year ago, February 7th, we lost a great man, Brad Stapley, uh, very well known in the community, uh, just, just kind of an icon here in town. They've moved his bison. If you ever uh, were down off of Riverside and Mall Drive, uh, you could always see the bison over there by the Dino Crossing Stapley Pharmacy. Um, there's some construction, so it got moved. And um, we just want to pay tribute to a good man who's done a lot for the community. Uh, on the anniversary of his passing, February 7th, that bison has been moved to the front of Sullivan Park. So um, when you drive down that way, nod your head and say hi. That's The Take. My name's Ed Tracy. We are here with Roland Lee. We are filming uh, a new segment that we call The Eddies. Ed, Eddie, get it? So it's kind of, it's kind of our way of talking to people in the community that have made a difference. People that uh, do fun things, great things, uh, memorable things, artistic things. And our first guest for the Eddies is the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Roland Lee. Tell me a little bit about your art, why you chose what the, the medium that you do, and how long you've been doing it. When we moved to St. George from Los Angeles, that was a big change. At the time, there was only one street light, in, or stoplight in St. George. Wow. And that was down on the corner of St. George Boulevard and Main Street. Really? And it's still there, and that's where I, I opened my first art studio. Zion National Park is what really pulled us in. And being an artist, of course, having a landscape like this is, is terrific. We've been here for more than 45 years now. How long have you been doing art? How long have you been? Well, all my life in art, but uh, I've been painting in watercolors for a little over 40 years. And why watercolors? Well, I was influenced by an artist who moved here by the name of Robert Shepard. Uh, I was uh, teaching art at Dixie College at the time, uh, helping out over there, and he moved to town, and he had worked with Arnold Freiberg and Cecil B. DeMille on a film called wow. The Ten Commandments. When he moved here, he had, uh, he was like a, a legend. Sure. And he, in his retirement years, he started painting landscapes in watercolor, and I thought they were amazing. And he became my mentor, and I started doing watercolors in, in landscape. And I started to be very successful, so I quit my job at Dixie College, and I've been working as a painter ever since. You know, you mentioned the landscapes here and that. One of the things that I love about St. George and, and Southern Utah is you live in the painting. You re this, this landscape here is amazing. So uh, would you say Zion uh, National Park is one of your favorite places to go paint? Yeah, I, I like the fact that people call me the painter of Zion. And I just, uh, I just released a new book on Zion called Discovering Zion. In fact, it's right over here. Yeah, you want to see yeah, it? Yeah, please. All righty. There you go. Flip through that a little bit and you'll see what I'm involved Discovering in. Discovering Zion. And uh, that just came out in August. And, uh, and these are all your works. It's full of my paintings wow. and stories about the Zion's history, the landscape, the geology, and the people that made Zion what it is now. That's great. Kind of a legend, my friend. We love you. <laughs> well, I don't you know about that, but thank you. <laughs> Roland Lee, everybody, our first Eddie recipient of the year. Make sure you come check him out. His studio is right here on, is this 200 East? Right 100 East. 100 East, what's the address here? It's 165 North, 100 East. We're right next to the, the old courthouse and the Pioneer Museum. We're right next to that. What's a block over from Ancestor Square? Roland Lee.
Lee, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. That's SG Live for today. Keep growing, St. George.